In most of my other videos, I've shown you how to use my own Warnoff Keys commands, command handler, and PM package. However, I've gotten some requests to make command handlers from scratch, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do within this video. This video assumes a solid understanding of JavaScript basics. If you don't know JavaScript, I suggest going down to the description of this video. I do have a complete JavaScript course, which you can watch the first hour of for free here on YouTube. Now, I'm assuming you already have a node project set up. And if you don't have one yet for your Discord bot, then go ahead and check out the first video in the playlist that is linked in the pinned comment. So the first step is to import all the required packages we need, such as Discord.js and .env. And if you don't have these installed, then again, go ahead and check out the first video in the series. Now, if you're using JavaScript, by default, you would import things like this. And if you're using TypeScript, by default, you'd import things like this. Of course, if you've configured your project to import things in different ways, then use the standard imports that you're used to. Next, we're looking to create our own client. This will represent our bot throughout our project. And we also need to pass in what we intend to use from the Discord API. So in this case, our commands will be based off of messages. And so we need access to guild messages. Without this, we won't be notified of any new messages being sent. And because this is a guild-based intent, we also need access to the guild's intent as well. Now we're going to listen for whenever our bot is ready. This is the perfect place to initialize our own command handler. So I'm going to start off by importing my command handler file. And I'm using let here because I do intend on changing this variable in the future. So go ahead and make a new file in the same workspace called command-handler.ts. And if you're using JavaScript, of course, you would use .js instead. And now that we have access to our handler, we want to see if it has a default object. Because depending on how you're exporting things, it might have everything you want wrapped inside of a default object. So this line here will essentially say if that default object exists, then just replace the handler that we want with the contents of the default object. This way, no matter how you're importing or exporting things, you're going to always get the same result. Next, we're going to call the handler and pass in our client. We'll work on the command handler class soon. But finally, we need to log into our bot. Here, I am using the .env package. So I'm going to access it as an environment variable. But if you're using a different system, such as config.json, then go ahead and log in as you normally would. If you're finding this video useful so far, consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. So inside of your command handler file, we first need to import everything we need. In this case, it'll be the fs package, which you can import using JavaScript or TypeScript in the normal way. And you also need to import the local git files file. So go ahead and make git-files.ts or git-files.js, depending on what language you're using. And we'll work on this file soon. Now, if you're using TypeScript, you also need to import the client object here from Discord.js because we will have to specify what type of parameter we have when we create our handler right here and we're passing in our client. So the next step is to export a function within JavaScript that would be module that exports equals and then the function here which has a client parameter within TypeScript that is simply just export default and then the function name with the client parameter. But because we're using TypeScript, we have to specify that this is going to be a client object. Next, we're looking to create a commands object, which is just simply const commands equals an empty object. And within TypeScript, we want to specify what type of values to be stored here. So the keys will always be strings. And then here we're using any, which typically you don't want to use with TypeScript. But in this case, we're going to be storing many different variable types within our objects, such as functions, strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, and the list goes on. So with that said, adding an any is fine for this use case. Next, we specify the suffix for our command files. In my case, I'm using TypeScript, so I am using .ts here. If you're using JavaScript, of course, you would use .js instead. Now we're going to get command files from our get files function, which we have not written yet, but we have imported right up here. So we'll write this file next, but just be aware that this will reach into our commands folder. So you will have to make that and it'll get all files and all nested directories and files within those. So this will essentially just return an array with ping.ts and add.ts as well. We'll come back to our command structure later on, but within here, just understand that so far, we're going to gain access to all of our files within an array. Next, we're going to loop through all of our commands using a for of loop. Next, we want to import all of our command files here. And in a similar concept to what we had on our index file on line 16, we want to see if the default property exists. If so, we want to replace the command file variable with the contents of the default property. This way, no matter how you're importing or exporting things, you'll always get the same result. Next, we're going to take the command file path, which will be a relative path from our current file into our commands directory. So that will include some forward slashes and backslashes. 
and the forward slash versus backslash will depend on which operating system you're on. So I'm assuming that most of you are going to be working on Windows and you will eventually deploy your bot to a Linux VPS. So we need to make sure this works for both operating systems. So we're going to simply take the command, which is the relative path to our file, and replace all forward slashes with backslashes. From there, we are then going to split this on a forward slash. And then here, we're going to get the last element of that split array. So essentially, this is just going to get the name of the file at the very end and not the full path. We can do this because we've already required the actual contents of the file here into our command file, but now we're looking to gain access to the command name so we can store that inside of our commands object right up here. So after we've got access to the command name, we also want to remove this suffix from the command. So this way users don't have to type in ping.ts in order to run the ping command, but rather they could just type in ping. So we're now going to store to the commands object with the key of command name dot two lowercase. This way, if you have capitalization in your names, it won't affect anything. Ping will always be lowercase in the commands object. And also whenever we're going to be running commands, we'll also take the user's input and convert that to lowercase before comparing anything as well, which basically makes it so capitalization won't matter whether it's from you or the user. So we're going to assign the value equal to the command file, which is going to be the object that has our callback and all of our other information. Next, I'm going to console log commands. So we have a better idea of what's happening whenever we're testing everything. And then I'm going to listen to the message create event. This is fired every single time a new message is sent. And so we have access to that message right here. We now want to see if the message author is a bot or if the message does not start with a exclamation point, then we want to return. Now you can change this to whatever you want really. It could be a question mark or anything else, but for simplicity, I'm just gonna stick with a single exclamation point. Now I'm looking to remove the exclamation point and then split all the remaining words into a string array based off of spaces. So message.content is the actual text from the message and slice here provided with one will essentially just remove the first element. We'll then take the results of this and split it on a space, basically making it so the command name and all arguments are now inside of individual elements of a string array. So the next step is to get access to the command's name and also remove it from the args array, which is easily done with args.shift. This will take the first element out of a string array and return it. We'll also be using dot two lowercase to make sure that the user input is also lowercase, similar to how our command file names are in two lowercase. So that way comparisons will actually work. Now, a quick note is this exclamation point here is only required if you're using TypeScript to prevent some errors. If you're using JavaScript, do not include this exclamation point. Next, we need to make sure that our command actually exists by checking our commands object. And then we're going to access our command right here and then run the callback method, passing in our message which contains additional information, such as the contents, the channel, the author, and other things like that. And we're also passing in as a rest parameter, all of our arguments from our args array. Now we're simply wrapping this inside of a try catch. So if anything does go wrong, it'll easily be printed to the console. So this is everything we need to do for this file. Let's go over to our git files.ts or git files.js file and work in there. So within here, we need to start off by importing the fs package within JavaScript, that's a standard require statement, and within TypeScript, we also want to use import, but we also want to import this type right here. This will be useful later on. That way we're not just dealing with strings, but we can actually detect if a certain file is going to be a directory or file, so we can get access to all nested files, such as add.ts right here. So next we're going to create our own function called get files. And here we're gonna have a directory and a suffix. Now the colon space string on both of these is only required if you're using TypeScript. This specifies what type of parameter this is going to be. And also this colon string array that I'm highlighting right here, this is only necessary if you're using TypeScript as well. This specifies what we're going to be returning from this function. So if you're using JavaScript, go ahead and ignore these three things. So next, I'm gonna create a constant called files. And within TypeScript, we can specify that this is going to be this certain type array right here. And we're going to assign this equal to the result of read directory sync which will synchronously read all of the files and folders within the directory that we passed in. Now this is important. We pass in a second object here, passing in with file types as true. This will make it so we can now access if a certain result is going to be a file or a folder. So next I'm gonna use let, and I'm gonna create a command file string array, and we're going to simply return this. Now in between these two lines, we'll add in some logic soon, but as you probably guessed, the colon string array that I'm highlighting right here is only required if you're using TypeScript. So now we're going to loop through all the files that will return from FS. 
And we're first going to see if the file that we're dealing with is going to be a directory by calling file.isDirectory as a function. If it is, we're going to reassign command files to a new array. This is why we use let right here. We're going to first use the spread operator to essentially put all the command files elements inside of the array, which in this exact case for this exact code so far wouldn't actually change anything. But the reason we're doing this is so we can also use the spread operator and recursively call get files passing in the directory we want. So in this case, we know that file is going to be a directory. So we're passing in a template literal here with a directory that we're currently on, for example, commands, which will be default at the start, and then forward slash file.name. So for example, math, this would then call the same function again, then looking into commands forward slash math. We now have to pass in our suffix. So we'll just pass in the same one that we were given. So essentially this code will continue to loop through every single folder it finds and return all files that end with a suffix, in this case, ts for me. And if you're using JavaScript, that'd be js for you. Now, what happens if we find an actual file? So if file.isDirectory is false, we'll then continue on. And here we're going to say if the file name ends with a suffix, for example, a ts or a js file, we then want to add this into the command files array. So here we're simply pushing the current directory forward slash file.name. And finally, we want to export the get files function within JavaScript that is module.exports equals get files. Within TypeScript, it is simply just export default get files. So this function here is done. And this is what we need to use in order to actually gain access to all of our files from our get files function call right here. So we're almost done here. Let's go into our ping.ts file. And this is a very simple example. So within TypeScript, I have to import the message from Discord.js. If you're using JavaScript, you can ignore this first line. And we have to export our own object. Within JavaScript, that is module.exports equals an empty object. Within TypeScript, that is export default empty object. Now within that object, no matter which language you're using, we want to add in a callback function. The parameters will be a message. And then we'll use a rest parameter for an args as a string array. Now, as you probably expected, if you're using JavaScript, you can ignore the typing here on message and the typing here as a string array. Now within this, I'm simply just logging the arguments so I can get a better idea of how this works. And I'm also replying to the message saying pong because this is a ping command. Now within my math directory, which is here just to show that nested folders will work with this, we have our add.ts file. Within here, of course, you want to import message if you're using TypeScript. And then we want to export an empty object just like before. The only difference here is that the contents of our callback method are different. So here I'm using let and creating a sum equals to zero. I am then looping through every single argument and I'm adding onto the sum the integer value of the argument. I am then replying saying the sum is and then passing in the sum within a template literal. So if I said add five and five, this will say the sum is 10. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal. We can go ahead and test everything. I can use npm run dev to run my bot. If you're using a different script, go ahead and use that. So here we have some console logs. If I go back over to my command handler, here we see a console log for command files. And that's what we see right here. This is an array of strings, which is the path relative to our command handler file that will then access commands math add.ts and then also commands ping.ts. We also have this object right here, which if I scroll down, this is a console log on line 48. This is going to be the name of the file, in this case, add and ping with the contents of the object. So what we're exporting from these files right here. So now if I go into Discord and I do exclamation point ping, it'll then reply with pong and we see this empty array right here. If I go back into my ping file, we see I'm console logging arguments right here. So if I were to say ping hello world, it'll then respond with a string array with hello world. Now, if I use add five and 10, it'll then say the sum is 15. And we don't see a console log here because of course in our add file, we are not doing that. We're just simply adding things up and then returning the sum. And of course, these are rest parameters, so we can add in as many as we want. So I can say add 5, 10, 50, and we see the sum right here is 65. So obviously, this is a very basic example, and this should be used as a foundation to whatever command handler you'd want to build. If you want to see more things added onto the system in the future, go ahead and leave a comment down below requesting what you'd want to see. And if you see other ideas you like, be sure to like other people's comments so I know exactly what videos to make in the future. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.